Hey, it's Ben here. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you how to put together a simple keyboard avoiding view in React Native. So when you touch one of your text input fields, uh, what it's gonna do is gracefully push it above the top of the keyboard so you can still see what you're typing. Uh, whether you're in Android or iOS, uh, portrait or landscape mode, it should still work. Uh, I've seen a lot of people struggling with this online, whether they're trying to use the included keyboard avoiding view or one of the community made packages. Nothing seems to work perfectly kind of straight out of the box. So we're gonna make something consistent and reliable. Uh, so if any of you have been struggling with this as well, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step, show you how I did it. Uh, the code is gonna be in the description as well. So let's get into it. So for this, we're gonna be using Expo. I'm gonna be coding in VS Code and using TypeScript because I like it. This is our main app. You see, we've just got a simple container view which centers some um, sample content and we wrapped it in our keyboard avoider, which is how it's gonna work. You put all your app content in it and it's gonna take any text inputs and push them above the keyboard. So we'll have a look at what's in this sample view. It's just some text and a text input put in a nice box. So you see, it's gonna look like this. Nothing particularly interesting going on here, uh, aside from this disabled full screen UI which you need in Android for landscape mode so that when you bring up the keyboard, it doesn't go full screen. It just keeps the rest of your app sitting above it. Uh, so let's have a look at the keyboard avoid. This is just the bare bones, what we're gonna build it up from. So what we have is an animated view, which wraps all of your app content. Uh, what we're gonna do is do a little animated transform on it. So you can see here we've got the translate Y transform property and we've created this keyboard offset animated value. So what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the height of a text input that you click on. So what's its Y position on the page? And we're going to do a little animation and we're going to push up the screen so that it's kind of offset the right amount from the keyboard. So this is just the basis for that. You can see we've got some props here. Uh, we just have a Y offset at the moment. So this is gonna be a configurable number where you can set what you want that distance to be from the top of the keyboard to your text input. Just cause that's a nice thing you probably wanna customize. Uh, we'll do that later, but yes, this is the bare bones. Now, personally, I think it's pretty boring to watch someone typing out an entire app. So I do have a finished version of the code. I'm just gonna be dropping in parts of it as I go along, just to keep things quick. Uh, so the next part we're gonna do is, so I've dropped in a few more things. Uh, first of which I'm gonna go through is, we have this ref here, which is gonna be a reference to our view component, which is wrapping our app and doing all the hard work here. And we're gonna use that reference as a basis for our measurements of the text input inside it. So, we've got that ref. Uh, what else we've done? We've got a use effect which runs when the app starts and sets up keyboard listeners. So we can see when the keyboard comes up and we can do something based on that. So I've got a little platform select line here when we're setting up the listener, which is just saying, if it's iOS, we're gonna use this keyboard will show function, which is neat. It kind of triggers when the keyboard's about to pop up. And for Android, it's keyboard did show. It doesn't have that, that same callback as iOS. Um, more or less the same thing. And when we run that, we're gonna run this little function we've set up. And what it's gonna do is get a reference to the text input that you've clicked on. So the way that we do that is we import the text input class, component, whatever it is. Uh, we access this function from it called currently focused input, which is really neat and gives us a ref for the text input that's been clicked on. It's currently focused, which is quite handy. Uh, if that exists, what we do is we measure it. So I've got this little measure function. We pass in that reference and the keyboard event. Now the keyboard event is useful because it has some information like the Y coordinate of the top of the keyboard, which we're gonna use when we're calculating the offset. So it's handy. We'll go and have a look at that function. So you can see here, this is where we grab the Y coordinate of the top of the keyboard from that event. So it's E dot 
end coordinates dot screen one gets us the top of it. Now this is where we do the juice of the actual text input measurement. So we've got that ref. Uh, we know it's not null because we've, we've run this and line here. So we're going to measure it using a couple of different measure functions. I had to experiment a little bit to find the ones that actually gave you the right measurements. So to start with, we're going to get the like, sort of absolute y coordinate in the screen using the measure layout. So what this does is you pass in the ref that we stored earlier to our view. So this is like the parent component that we're doing measurements relative to. So when we make that measurement, we're going to take the Y coordinate that we measure for that text input relative to its parent. And we're just going to store that as page Y just to distinguish it from the Y that's going to come up later. So we've got the Y coordinate of text input. Now, problem with that is it's going to be the Y coordinate of the very top of your text input. So the top of that little box is what we're going to get. So we also want the height of the text input, which is why we're going to do this additional measure call. You can get height from this measure layout, but I found it wasn't the right value. So I was able to get the right result with this measure. So I put an extra measure in there. And from that, we grab the actual height. And our final calculations of the Y position of that text input and its offset that you want to have from the bottom, we're doing inside this final measure. So first, let's look at the Y position of the text input. So what we've got is page Y, which we calculated before, which was the top position, plus the height that we've just calculated from this measure plus Y offset, which if you remember was that prop that we defined earlier that we want to have as the customizable little buffer offset that the user can set. So that should get us the Y coordinate. So we have the Y position of the top of the keyboard and we have the Y position of the bottom of the text input. So we're going to compare those to calculate the offset. So if the text input is greater than the keyboard Y position, so if the text input is below the keyboard, then the offset is going to be the difference between those two. So we're just going to have that little offset based on the difference in the height. Uh, but if it is above it, then the offset is going to be zero because if it's already above the keyboard, we don't really want to do anything. It's already visible, it's already good. And you can see I've just added in the keyboard Y position there so we can look at it. So I'm going to tap the text input and we're going to see what we get here. We've got the Y position at the top of the keyboard is 150. The bottom of the text input is 300. So that's obviously below the keyboard. So what's happened is it's calculated this offset of the difference between the two, 146. So that's nice. That's what we want. Uh, you might have seen me do that just now and been like, hey, it's already pushing it above the keyboard. Why do we need to do anything? Well, basically that is the default behavior for Android. If you have set up in your app.json, this is for Expo specifically, this uh, software keyboard layout mode and set it to pan. So what that does is basically makes it so your view that you currently have up, your, your app view, uh, pushes up above the keyboard. There's a few problems with this, one of which is the distance between that and the keyboard isn't customizable, it's just sort of fixed to wherever the bottom of the cursor lies, which doesn't look particularly great. And iOS doesn't have this behavior. So there's no default thing in iOS to say, okay, just push it above. So we need to do our measurements to get this custom offset and for basically any of this behavior on iOS. So. Let's push forward with it. So that's basically the juice of the calculation. What we're gonna do next is chuck in the actual animation. So we're gonna take that offset and we're gonna do something with it. So next up, going to keep track of this keyboard offset we're calculating with a state. So I'm using hook state. I just like the syntax and usage better. So what's different here? Uh, we have, when we're calculating the height 
of the text input, the Y position of it. When we're doing this measurement, we have to offset it by the amount we already know that it is pushed up, which isn't super intuitive. It's just sort of trial and error, working out how to make it consistent. Um, and also this Y offset value that we want to push it up by that custom prop that we had. And what we're going to want to do is actually store that offset and use it. So we have this update offset function I've made. As for these lines, so if you're in iOS, like I said before, there's no default thing to actually push that text input up. So we're going to use the entire offset value and push the whole view up by that amount. As for Android, you only have to do a little bit more work. So we're just taking the minimum of the offset and the Y offset. So if the amount we need to push it up by is less than that little buffer we want, then we will do something. Otherwise, it's already fine. Um, but like I said, iOS is the main one that we're using this entire offset for. So what we do here is we are taking the new offset value and storing the state. So we're doing this use state. Uh, we're just setting it to the new value. And then we're doing an animated timing. So this is the part that's actually going to do the pushing up. So we're going to affect this transform, this translate Y property of our view, and we're going to push the view up a little bit. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the negative of the offset because we want to go upwards. Uh, we just have a very small duration, just 100 milliseconds. And I've just added a little bit of easing on there. Um, I have found it just doing an ease out rather than an in or anything else it tends to look pretty nice. We've got that. Um, so let me show you what this looks like. I just click on it. So you can see there, there is a little gap of 10 pixels between the top of the keyboard and the bottom of that text input, which is very nice. That's what we wanted. When we did it before, you know, it was just bringing the keyboard up to the bottom of that little cursor there, which is not very pretty. So that is pretty good. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is basically just a couple of little tweaks to make sure that it consistently does this and resets when you put the keyboard down and stuff. Yeah, so let's have a look at that. So the last main addition I've made to this is just basically resetting this keyboard offset that we're storing every time we put the keyboard back down. So I've added a listener in our use effect for when the keyboard is going to hide, always hiding, depending on the platform. And it's just going to run this on keyboard hide, which is very simple. It's just calling update offset again, which is resetting that offset value that we stored in the state. And it's just running the animation again to put it back down. That's really just about it. So I'll show you what that looks like in portrait as well. So you can see here, you click on it, brings it up. It's got that little buffer down below it. Uh, we can put it back into landscape mode. You can see it's nicely doing the same thing. So I've just gone back to the app for a sec to mess around with this Y offset that we've got as a customizable parameter. So I've changed it to 50. So let's have a look at what happens when we click it now. You can see we've got a much bigger buffer between the keyboard and the text input. So that's pretty cool. And you can see it'll do the same thing for landscape. That's pretty neat. Just quickly, also wanted to give you an example of when you have a text input that's already above the keyboard and is already above that sort of Y offset that you wanted. Um, so if I have a look at this, we can click on it. It doesn't do anything because it's already nicely up there. Bottom one still buffs up. Um, if you see this one in landscape, uh, the top text input is already going to be slightly below where we want because we've got a big offset of 50. So if you click on it, you see it will push it up a little bit just to keep that, that offset. Um, whereas if we had that smaller, it would just stay put where it is. So that is all working very nicely. So that's about it for how the keyboard avoiding view actually works. Uh, if you jump on the GitHub, you can see there's a link in the description. You can see the full code. You might notice a few differences there, like I handle some special cases when the screen orientation changes, but otherwise that's pretty much the bulk of it. Yeah, so it's also available as an NPM module. If you want to use it in your own projects, feel free. It's RN Keyboard Avoider. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like or sub. If you want to follow my game at all, you can jump on Twitter, at Ben Scott Steer, or you can jump on our Discord channel and chat to us there. But yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.